Amazing. Seems like we can start. So make sure that your back is erect. Two things are most important for your meditation if you want to be successful. Your back needs to be erect and there should be no movement during meditation. If you can fulfill these two things, the rest will probably progress itself. Melanie is playing with the with the suitcase. Uh, okay, whatever. Melanie, from my side, everything is all right. But I'm not sure whether from your side, everything is all right. Uh, maybe next time you may like to keep the suitcase uh, somewhere else temporarily, and uh, so you have more space for yourself. No need to do it today, but for next time, surely. Okay, so as you're sitting in a comfortable meditation posture with the back erect, side cast down, we will not be looking at the videos, we will be looking at the floor or whatever is there in front of us, down there. And we can make the first determination in our minds voicelessly from now on for 10 minutes. I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. From now on for 10 minutes, I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. From now on for 10 minutes, I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. Make sure your back is erect. See if you can check your back and make it erect. Maybe even more than that. I think you can do even better, some of you. The back when it's erect, it is comfortable, but at the same time, in the beginning, you may need to make some effort. Let's see if you can make your back erect so that it's healthy. Okay, that's better. And we can make the first determination in our minds voicelessly from now on for 10 minutes. I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. And we can gently lovingly notice the flat piece of flesh at the top of the head. We allow it to be heavy. And changing. We continue to the forehead, eyes, nose, lips, chin, cheeks, ears, back of the head, and we allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the head to be heavy and changing. And check your back again. Make sure your back is erect. I think Paris can do even better than that. Even better than that. Try as much as you can. And we continue to the neck. Shoulders. Arms. Elbows, forearms, wrists, palms, fingers, 
tips of fingers, chest, abdomen, back, and we allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the upper part of the body to be heavy and changing. And again we check our back, we make sure it is erect and we try even more if possible. Paris may like to try even more than this. And we can continue to the buttocks, thighs, knees, calves, heels, soles, toes, tips of toes, and we allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the body to be heavy and changing. And again we check our back and if there is a way to make it more erect we do our best. I think Paris may like to try even more than this. And as we have accepted the nature of the heaviness of the muscles, we can accept the nature of all of the body. We keep the back erect, that's true. But we accept the way how the body works. We accept that it's made up of hardness, solidity, cohesion, temperature, motion. And as we allow the body to be the way it is, we achieve freedom from worry about the body. We enjoy the freedom, we enjoy the peace, and again, Paris may like to check her back and see if she can make it more erect.
And we can now share our peace to other living beings. We start in our room and recite in our minds voicelessly. We don't force, we don't expect anything. We just allow all of the beings in the room to enjoy at least as much peace as we have now. May all beings in this room be in peace. We can gradually expand our thoughts of loving kindness. May all beings in this building be in peace. May all beings in this city or village be in peace. May all beings in this country be in peace. May all beings on this continent be in peace. May all beings on this planet be in peace. May all beings, including me, be in peace. Now, because the time for this sitting is finished, let's make the last determination in our minds voicelessly. From now on, I will always be mindful and shine with loving kindness. From now on, I will always be mindful and shine with loving kindness. From now on, I will always be mindful and shine with loving kindness. And with that determination, we can slowly, mindfully change the way of our sitting. Do not come to your cameras yet, stay where you are and we will take one more minute when we enjoy the peace we gained in meditation 
And even then we keep the back erect. Stay without any movement at all, and we'll be just observing the mind. Okay, so if you like, you can now approach your cameras. Seems like Paris have a serious problem with keeping her, her back erect. Yes, Langholm, you, you would like to say something? I apologize for not coming to the meeting last week because I was feeling unwell and had to sleep early. Okay, no problem at all. So we are waiting for Melanie and for Paris and Florence. So uh, Paris, did anyone else apart from me um, pointed out to you the problem of your back? Or am I the only person? My mother. Uh, your mom told you already. Uh, yeah. This is very bad because uh, this um, has very bad consequences for your health. You, uh, if you uh, want to know how to say that. Uh, if you do not want to become very ugly, uh, you'd better change uh, the way how you keep your back as soon as possible because uh, this because you look like a 90 year old lady you know when you when you sit like that so I don't think that's a good thing and it's it's interesting the contrast you know between you and Florence Florence there is sitting almost like a Buddha statue and you there <laughs> like that. So, uh, so I was thinking um, uh, that uh, Paris may like to uh, uh, may like to uh, try meditation uh, 
uh, while leaning over some wardrobe or something like that and then uh, gradually uh, learn what is what is it like to have the back erect because when you are uh, when you are uh, how to say that um, following when your back follows exactly the wall uh, then you know very well what is to be er erect so you cannot uh, have wrong understanding and then as you get the habit gradually of keeping your back erect at least according to a wall then later uh, you can uh, start meditating without the wall so uh, Paris do you meditate every day? no I see it would be good if you can meditate at least five hours, uh, sorry, five minutes every day. Uh, uh, then, uh, and during those five minutes, you would actually, uh, I suggest that you actually lean over the wall or over a wardrobe. Uh, wall may be cold, so you, uh, I don't know, Singapore is quite warm. Not sure how's your wall, but you can try a wardrobe, uh, something you had behind you when you were now meditating. And... Um, uh, you know come to the uh, to the uh, to the door as as close as possible and um, then follow uh, follow the straightness of the door and like this if you meditate every day five minutes I think after two weeks you gradually learn what is to be uh, what is it like to be to have back erect and then uh, you can start meditating without it what do you think about that I cannot hear you. You're muted. I cannot hear you. Can you unmute yourself and let me know what do you think about it? I will try that. You will try that? Okay, nice. All right. So uh, today we are following Sri Lanka pronunciation. So it's very easy. I would like to ask everyone to unmute and you can take three refuges five precepts you can keep your hands together at the chest okay Marinda all right Yamahang Vadami Tang Vadeta Aham Bhante Tisaranena Saha Pancha Silang Dhammang Yajami Anugahankatva Silang Deta Me Bhante Anukampang Upadaya Dutiampi aham bhante Tisaranena saha Pancha silang dhammang yajami Anugahan katva Silang de tame bhante Anukampang upadaya Tatiampi aham bhante Tisarane na saha Pancha silang dhammang yajami Anugahan katva Silang de tame bhante Anukampang upadaya Namota sabhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo 
Okay, for the second time. Yes, for the third time. Very well. Buddhang saranangat chami dhammang saranangat chami sanghang saranangat chami. Duti yampi buddhang saranangat chami duti yampi dhammang saranangat chami duti yampi sanghang saranangat chami Tati yampi buddhang saranangat chami tati yampi dhammang saranangat chami tati yampi sanghang saranangat chami Saranagamanang paripunna Panati pata vera manisikha padang samadhyami Adinna dana vera manisikha padang samadhyami Kame sumicha jara vera manisikha padang samadhyami Musavada vera manisikha padang samadhyami Sura meraya macha pamadatana vera manisikha padang samadhyami Tisaranena sadhing pancha silang dhammang sadhukang surakitang katva apamadena sampadetha. May you be happy, may you be healthy, may you soon attain the eternal bliss of Nibbana. All right, uh, so um, Melanie, do you know what is Musavada? Not to lie. Yes, not to lie. Musa means false, Vada means speech, false speech. But the way you take it is, uh, is quite enough. Caitlin, do you know what is uh, Sura Meraya? Mm, I'm not sure. Maybe, um, never mind. I'm, I'm not sure. And do you at least know what is it related to? Um, one of the five previous. Yes, that's terms. true. Which, which one? Um, don't mind. Don't kill. No, no, no. You have four more options. Um, don't drink. Yes, that's right. What What do you not drink? Um, alcohol. Alcohol, and that's the meaning. So, Sura Meraya are two kinds of alcohol mentioned in our scriptures, which involve all of uh, all kinds of alcohol. Sura Meraya, Majja, uh, Majja is uh, another word for alcohol. Sura Meraya, Majja, Pamada, Tana, uh, Pamada means forgetfulness. Tana means the basis, whatever causes forgetfulness. So you have the Sura alcohol. Meraya alcohol, Majja means whatever makes you 
uh, you have the English equivalent mad you you see there the similarity Madja and mad Madja mad do you see there some similarity I see it there and that's exactly it if somebody drinks alcohol uh, the least effect will be that they will become crazy they will become mad in the future that's the Buddha's uh, teaching so that's interesting that the word Madja which is used for alcohol is also uh, the word for insanity for uh, madness in in English so you can easily remember Madja means alcohol Sura Meraya we could say that's the technical term for alcohol because they are the uh, they are no, I'm not sure, but I think they are the names of the two guys who actually uh, discovered and invented alcohol in uh, in very, very far, far, long, long ago. The Buddha gives uh, tells the full story on how alcohol was actually invented. The Buddha says that uh, long ago, uh, two men, two hunters, went to a forest and they saw uh, that animals are sleeping and uh, that they drink something uh, some kind of water at a tree and then they fall asleep as if they were dead and then suddenly they uh, get up and they go and they think oh that's interesting let's try it out and they themselves go and they drink it so then they discover how it actually naturally happened how the alcohol actually naturally appeared in the forest it's very rare but according to our scriptures it is possible and uh, so they thought hey this is a great thing so uh, let's uh, go and sell it so they sold it uh, they went to uh, a, a city and they said you know we have here a magical drink and everybody of you must try it out and the people they tried out and they loved it so much that they were drinking and drinking and drinking and they became poor they didn't go to work they didn't do anything they were just drinking and drinking and drinking so they became poor so these two guys uh, when, when they realized that this is the fault of these two guys that they introduced alcohol uh, the two guys ran away and they went to another city and then in that city they also taught it and again the people were drinking and again they made all of the city poor uh, so, you know uh, totally uh, totally ruined by by the alcohol and then uh, they moved like this from city to city uh, the story then uh, ends that um, uh, as uh, a huge amount uh, of alcohol was cooked in uh, in one city uh, according to these two guys re re recipe um, an animal uh, drank it and then ran away and I now I don't remember it exactly but I think somebody saw it somebody saw it before the people started to drink alcohol and then they told it to the king you see the king what will happen we don't want that so the two guys were expelled before the people would actually get to drink the alcohol so uh, there is a story like that anyway uh, Sura Meraya is the technical word for alcohol and Majja is the general term for all things that make you uh, that make you well inebriate do you know the word inebriate drunk so uh, so uh, because the word majja is very general I understand that this role is related also to drugs so if you take drugs like marijuana or uh, cocaine or heroin or many other kinds of uh, so-called addictive drugs well you were already reading about hard drugs in the book then uh, that would uh, actually classify as matcha yes Melanie uh, I have a question mm -hmm. I'd like to so can you say the full poly term and what is drunk in French I think uh, we would have to have another class for French for this question. Do you have a question about Pali or Buddhism? Oh, no, I meant like the other question. Like, can you say like the whole like term for the five precepts? Because I'm having difficulties and it's like very long. Um, you're asking me for in the English translation of the five precepts? No, I'm asking for like 
of the whole phrase before um, when I will say cabinets Miami. Uh -huh. the, the word before the the other words. I see. Okay, so the the translation of those particular uh, things that that uh, are uh, like not the translation. So like the like the pronunciation of, like all together. Okay, pronunciation. I think you're pronouncing it well. Pana tipata, pana atipata. Pana is life. Oh. Atipata well, is destruction. The fifth, the fifth one. Sura, Meraya. So those are the two kinds of alcohol. Majja. That's alcohol in general. Pamadatana. 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 There are two words. They are combined together as one. And that is the basis of forgetfulness. Is that what you were asking about? Um, and he's stuck. Does everybody have the translation? Uh, do Do you have the text? Uh, I will send you the text in the in the chat box. What's going on? Okay, I'm sending you the the text with translation in the chat box so that if any one of you would like to see the translation you can access it easily seems like zoom has updated their their system now you can see it very easily clearly so Melanie uh, did you get your answer or do you still have any question uh, ironically my computer uh, died just as you were about to say it. Yes. So I explained the meaning of the word Sura Meraya Majapamada Tana. Sura Meraya are the technical terms for alcohol. Majja is the general term for all alcohol. Pamada Tana is two words. Pamada Tana. Tana here means, uh, Tana literally means place but here it means the basis of so pamada tana the basis of forgetfulness so sura meraya majja pamada tana can i practice saying it is it uh sura meraya um, majja padana no Sura, the R is better pronounced in the way they pronounce in India. R, Sura. Sura. Mm -hmm. Meraya. Sura, Meraya. Ya. Ya. Sura, Meraya. Sura, Meraya. Maja. Maja. Sura Meraya Maja. Sura Meraya Jani. I think you need to read it from the paper. Then, okay. then you can make it. Okay. Sura Meraya Maja. Can Sura you try? Ja. Perfect. Pamadatana. Pamadatana. Yes, very well. All right, so let's move on to our notes. Today, I think we have chapter 13. Is that right? Oh, Oma, uh, can you tell us what's the chapter for today? Chapter 13. 13. Thank you very much. So, Marinda, can you please read for us your note? Technology is another opportunity for novelty seeking. 
And because the brain of a teenager is so easy to stimulate, all it takes is the latest digital toy to tease it into distraction. Hmm. Thank you. Caitlin? Um, could you ask me in a bit? I'm trying to find my notes currently. Okay. So, Lang Hong? These teenagers are the world's leading authorities on technology and law. Adolescents are the, uh, are the saviors of users. They are also the most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Savvy. 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 All right. Uh, uh, Florence? Uh, you're searching your note? Uh, so, Paris? There is increasing evidence of the effect of excessive internet use on mood in adolescents, and several studies have shown a connection between depression, poor academic performance, and the inability to curb time spent online. Mm -hmm. Very well. Yes, there has been a, a statistic that measured uh, the success at school um, for, the, for uh, students who used Facebook. So is it true that, uh, is it possible that those who use Facebook a lot, that they will have poor academic results, poor results in their exams? And indeed, it has found out, the research has found out that those who use uh, Facebook, the more you use Facebook, the lower you will have um, results at school. And the less you use Facebook, the, the better results you will have at school. It's, it's incredible. Okay, uh, then, uh, uh, Melanie? Uh, for my notes, I want to read some examples and then read uh, what, what it got from those examples. Okay. Uh, one example is, I began going crazy. I felt paralyzed, almost handicapped in my ability to live. I felt dead. From China, I sat in my bed and stared blankly. I had nothing to do. The feeling of nothing passed into my heart. I felt I had lost something important. From the United Kingdom, emptiness, emptiness overwhelmed me. Unplugging felt like turning off the light support system. I feel paralyzed. Uh, many of these students borrowed the language of substance abuse. And in the next page on 210, it said that I became bulimic with my media. And bulimic is similar to a disorder. So they use the language of disorder and um, substance abuse. And what is the chapter from which you are reading? Uh, chapter 13. In okay. general invasion. Uh -huh, okay. What was the page number? Uh, I read examples from 2009, um, um, and then I read another thing from 210. That is so strange. Oh, because you're, you have, of course, different page numbers. Uh, I forgot that you have different page numbers. Okay, that's good. Um, and then, uh, uh, Caitlin, have you got your note? Yes. Um, so I chose the sentence, the adolescent's propensity for addiction occurs at a time of exploration when you're trying to make decisions, but also in the case of my correspondent, experimenting in a virtual world so your perspective is skewed. And I'm pretty sure this is on page 153. Okay, always please note it as the first thing and then write the note. Then uh, uh, Florence. Chronically high levels of cortisol have been associated with increased aggression and impulsivity, loss uh -huh. of short term memory, and even cardiovascular disease. In other words, multitasking can wear us down, causing confusion that. Um, I can't pronounce it. What is the chapter from which you are reading? Chapter 13. Chapter 13, okay. Yes, I actually, that's one, one of the uh, notes that I also have. 
Oh, that's for the multitasking. Okay, I didn't hear the word multitasking. Not only is multitasking an impediment to learning, say scientists, it also can prompt the release of stress hormones such as cortisol and adrenaline. So it's the multitasking that causes the stress uh, release of the stress hormone cortisol and then we learn what is uh, the problem, what, what would be the problem with cortisol. Well, because if you have too much cortisol, you have uh, also aggression and impulsivity. So multitasking is the culprit. Uh, Langholm, did you already read for us? Yes, you did. Okay. Did I miss someone? Marinda, you, you did? And I, I missed my uh, mom. Marinda, you, you already read for us? Yes, okay, so Amo. Today's teenagers and 20-somethings make up the first generation of young people exposed to such a breathtaking number of electronic distractions. Um, page 206, I think. Okay. Yeah, 206. Nice, thank you. So now let, let me read my, uh, my note. I hear something in red. Cases of teenage suicide due to misuse of social media history. In 2008, in Cincinnati, 80, 18 year old Jessica Logan hanged herself after an ex boyfriend forwarded her nude cell photos to a high school classmates. In 2006, an eighth grade in Missouri killed herself when she learned an internet romance was a hoax. And in 2001, an Oregon State University engineering student was convicted of invasion of privacy for using his laptop webcam to broadcast over the internet images of his roommate and his roommate's girlfriend having sex. I had another note. Yes, I have here another note. It seems a modest amount of gaming, like any form of learning, can actually be good for the brain. Yes, that, that's a better note than the previous one. Uh, a study from the Max Planck Institute in Germany showed that gaming was associated with some regions of the brain being larger. In particular, the entorhinal cortex, hippocampus, and occipital and parietal lobes. These are areas that are important for working memory and visual spatial skills. All right, quite an interesting chapter, isn't it? So uh, we have uh, uh, we have now two weeks uh, to learn the next chapter. The next chapter is let's see, one hundred eighty-eight. From 181. Well, it's not so big, but it's probably a little more technical, seems to me at least. And there is a lot of interesting stuff. Gender matters, very important thing now in the US. Uh, 300 years ago, uh, no matter, now it is a big matter. So, um, gender matters, something you need to know in the modern day and age. So Gender Matters is one, one of the most interesting chapters, actually, in the whole book. Uh, maybe not so practical, but uh, very interesting. So I suggest to you that uh, you read it very carefully. Uh, we'll have two weeks. I'm not coming next week because I'll be in Singapore. And what else? Anything else? Anyone has any question? Anything you'd like to say? No questions? Yes, Melanie? Uh, during the meditation, I noticed that after we like after you were saying uh, each body part that and said that they were like changing and um, uh, being heavy, uh, you um, I noticed that there was just like a silence. I didn't know what I was supposed to do during that silence. When you uh, are there with the parts of the body, you consider the fact, and that may sometimes, um, it may sometimes help if you take more time 
for each part you can actually if you meditate alone or if you want to fall asleep and you cannot fall asleep then meditate and meditation on the body on the parts of the body is very helpful so uh, as for me when i go to sleep and i don't fall asleep immediately then uh, the number one technique to fall asleep which uh, basically always works is meditation on the muscles so i go from the top of the head to the tips of the toes and then again and again usually i do not even get to the tips of the toes and i'm asleep so uh, during meditation what you can do actually you do not need to dedicate equal time for each part you can actually dedicate as long as you want for any part the main um, requirement is that if possible you go regularly so you regularly follow part by part and for example if you are interested in the heaviness of uh, of uh, your tips of fingers well then you do not touch you do not jump i mean from the let's say from the nose or from the lips to the tips of fingers you gradually move there through the lips um, chin cheeks ears back of the head neck shoulders arms elbows forearms uh, wrists palms fingers and there you go you are there at the tips of the fingers and you can then stay at the tips of the fingers even for five minutes or ten minutes or thirty minutes doesn't matter if you can stay there mindful then that's great if you fall asleep then of course it will take some time but uh, so there's like... no problem staying longer time at some place than other places so after you finish at like the tip of the toes and you're just like like and you plan to do like 15 minutes but it's only been like seven minutes can you repeat from the top of the head or no yeah i can tell you because i teach this so many times to so many people so what what is it you would like to repeat like after i finish meditating on like the tips of the toes mm -hmm. can i go back to the head okay uh, you theoretically could, but the 10 minutes, 15 minutes don't allow that much. It's uh, better to dedicate that time to observe the peace you've got and see if you can increase that peace so that you can share it with other living beings. If you meditate 45 okay. minutes, if you meditate 60 minutes, well, then you can go again and again and again and again and again and again. If you follow my 10-day ten, ten retreat or my Thursday retreat, well, then you can meditate day after day after day uh, so that uh, you uh, get the necessary skill to develop peace through this practice very fast and very reliably. Then you develop the power to radiate loving kindness to all living beings without any distinction, again, with a very, uh, uh, with a very reliable accuracy and uh, reliability and then uh, you develop wisdom uh, in relation to the nature of your body and the mind so these days i'm leading quite a few meditation retreats uh, now i teach even online so i have some students online who connect with me every day for interview they tell me how they meditated i tell them what to do next but the requirement for a meditation retreat is that the student must meditate at least six hours a day if the meditator doesn't get a full six hours or more, then they're not eligible for interview. So then the next day, they have again opportunity to try out, see if they can do six hours. If they can do six hours, then the following day, they, they are eligible for interview. If not, sorry, no interview, need to do six hours. They do five hours, 59 minutes, sorry, no interview, must do six hours. So those are some roles for intensive meditation retreat okay i see and for like when you say heaviness and um change changing i'm kind of like confused because it kind of seems vague because like i'm unsure what is heavy how do yes. i focus on heavy heaviness is a measurement so uh it's like a temperature as if i said that they have a temperature anything everything has temperature in the same way anything and everything has some kind of measurement of heaviness so temperature can be 
above the, uh, zero degrees, it can be below degree, zero degrees, it can be zero degrees. The same way heaviness can be above uh, above your ability when you think that it's uh, light, you think, oh, this, that's heavy. It can be at the zero when you are not sure, is this heavy or light? I don't know. And it can be in the minus when you think, oh, this is very light, this is easy to, to lift. Like the hair, body hair is pretty, uh, pretty uh, light, but still we say that there is heaviness. That means there is a measurement of heaviness. Like you say, uh, there is some kind of temperature, but there is actually no heat. There can be coolness. So that's what I mean by heaviness. Heaviness is a measurement of heaviness. So we consider uh, the fact that there is a measurement of heaviness. For example, in the mind, there is no measurement of heaviness. But in all matter, there is always some kind of measurement of heaviness. Is that clear? Uh, it's kind of confusing. So, uh, what I understand what you're trying to say is that are you saying like when you say heaviness, it's focusing on like the measurement of it? Yes. So, for okay. example, the bones are a little heavier. Uh, the skin is a little lighter. Hair, body hair are very light. Now, if you look at the muscles, the muscles have pretty much the same heaviness uh, per uh, per cubic inch. So uh, you do not need to worry that much about it because all muscles definitely have some kind of heaviness. Uh, some are, of course, uh, uh, very light, like there, there are tiny, very tiny muscles behind the eyes that, at least until recently, scientists didn't know what are they actually for. Uh, but uh, there are, of course, bigger, heaviness, uh, bigger uh, muscles like the uh, uh, rectus femoris, uh, which is the uh, the straight muscle at the or the quadriceps, the mu the the muscles at the thighs, they're pretty big. So uh, different muscles um, have different size, uh, somewhat different shapes, but uh, all of them more or less have the same nature, and they are similarly heavy in terms you know per cubic uh, inch. Uh, so, um, when you say like changing, do I focus on like how like the body ages or do I focus on how like it can like be painful in one second and like um, calm in the next? In this case, uh, we distinguish, uh, we means uh, we as followers of the Buddha, uh, we distinguish the uh, two levels of change. First is the conceptual, second one is the ultimate. So in the conceptual level, uh, all muscles change with age, uh, they change with the exchange of the cells. Within five years, basically all of your body is entirely new. So our body is always under reconstruction. This reconstruction is extremely important. If uh, all of the body tissues do not change, then that's actually a disease. So there is a special disease of skin like that, when uh, especially darker, uh, darker skin people, uh, when uh, their uh, skin doesn't uh, replace sufficiently fast, then it actually gets light, uh, but it doesn't get light everywhere, only in certain spots. So then they suffer uh, a special disease uh, that's uh, that's characterized by spots on the skin and that uh, is caused by slow replacement of the skin cells. Uh, so it's very important for the body to be replaced, uh, for the cells to be replaced, but um, we also have the ultimate level. But we also have the ultimate level of um, of change and that's the change uh, that we consider at least the commentary speak of it uh, that is the continuous change so uh, let me first find vitiligo Maybe you know of that disease, vitiligo. You can Google that and find out. Vitiligo. All right. Then, sounds weird, right? Vitiligo. 
then uh, what about uh, the ultimate change so we believe that all matter actually consists of tiny little particles you maybe have heard of atoms but in buddhist philosophy we do not we do have mention of atoms but the description of uh, the tiny little particles is different from the modern description of atoms although it seems that the size of atoms today uh, is actually smaller than the size of the smallest particles that we consider in the Buddhist philosophy, which I find quite interesting. So our smallest particles uh, are not called atoms, although we do have an equivalent of atoms called paramanu, but we do have so-called kalapas. Kalapa means a grouping. It is a group of things which are always together so i translate it as a grouping i think that's my translation don't remember ever reading this translation anywhere else so grouping that's how i translate it so it's easier to to understand kalapa k-a-l-a-p-a -A -A. Ka so these kalapas these little groupings are uh, somewhat we believe that they are uh, or one great monk said, Lady Sero said that a kalapa is, I think, 49 times smaller than an atom, than a Buddhist atom. Be careful about that. So uh, kalapas are, are very tiny. And these kalapas, they are always made at least of eight things. And that's solidity, cohesion, temperature, motion, uh, color, uh, smell, um, taste and nutritive essence nutritive essence so these are eight things that are in every single kalapa okay so you will note kalapa do you want the, the list of the eight things I can write it down for you solidity cohesion temperature motion color taste no smell taste nutritive essence eight eight how do you say that components of a kalapa of every kalapa so then uh, these kalapas, uh, if they're in the body, in a human body or in an animal body, they have some more components. These eight are in every kalapa, in every matter, everywhere. But if it is in a body of a living being, then it has some more materiality. And what is that? That is especially life force. Life force. It, can, it is also uh, sexual, uh, how do we call that? Distinction, let's call that like this, but there, there's a better word. Sexual distinction, so like masculinity, femininity. So if, you, if it's a man, then the man has uh, male kalapas. If it's a female, then the female has female kalapas. If it's, uh, uh, if it's something else or someone else, well, then I don't know because scriptures don't explain that. And then uh, it seems like everybody either has male or female or both. Uh, but how does that happen with those who have both? And do they actually have both? Or what's going on there? We don't know. Or I don't know. Uh, life force sexual distinction. And then uh, we have the heart base, uh, base of the mind, probably also brain and things. And then, what else can be there? Uh, sensitivity, sense, sensitivity, like eye sensitivity, etc. And and other. So, some of those uh, kalapas they contain life force. And sexual distinction some of them contain life force and heart base some of them contain uh, the yes the sensitivity so this way you have actually the first 
30 the first 30 elements in a newborn baby in a newborn concept how to call it a zygote when uh, the mother starts to have a new baby in the womb then the baby starts with 30 elements what are they 10 10 and 10 the first 10 are these basic eight plus life force and sexual distinction second 10 are these eight plus life force and the heart base and the third 10 are these eight plus life force and the body sensitivity altogether 30. so that's how a human being starts as a kalala as the pure water kalala kalala yeji that's the burmese word Anyway, that's, uh, this is uh, a very uh, deep level of Dhamma and I hope to teach this to you maybe after like two, three years. So uh, not yet. That's why I also didn't ask you to take notes because that's not, uh, it's not the time yet. Now the time is to finish the teenage brain, then read Dhamma para commentary and then we will start uh, this kind of deep level. That this is a very advanced level of tamma. Did you say that like each muscle has kalapa? Yes, all of the uh, muscles, all of the uh, materiality has kalapas, and the muscles that you have in the body, you know, for example, if you take a muscle from a chicken uh, that's dead, then that muscle does not have more than eight kalapas. There are only eight, but in your body, when you're alive, those kalapas also have some more materialities such as the life force so there would be at least nine materialities so how many kalapas would be in each muscle uncountable Z zillions <laughs> do they like die and then come back or are they just like like they're changing right Whenever you die, the mind stops to arise in that body and it starts to arise in a different body. For example, in a new Kalala. But it can also appear in the heaven realm, it can also appear in the hell realm or in the realm of ghosts where there are no Kalalas, there are no zygotes. There are spontaneously appeared fully grown complete living beings you do not uh, go through the process of maturation in heaven in brahma realm in hell or in the ghost realm you you appear there immediately as a full-fledged being okay wait so i'm confused on what exactly galapa does during like galapa like, arises changing. passes so all of the matter that we see are actually just arising, passing, arising, passing, arising, passing kalapas. The kalapa doesn't have any time to do anything at all. It just appears, it disappears, appears, disappears, appears, disappears. So now I will tell you something very deep. You will have to pay a lot of attention and think about it very much. This is what the subcommentaries say. I'm not exactly sure whether that's the way, but whatever, that's what they say. Now, if you have these kalapas arising, passing, arising, passing, new, 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 new kalapas are arising. In that case, what is a movement? Like if I'm moving my hand, then throughout the time that I'm actually moving my hand, actually these are rising, passing, rising, passing, rising, passing, rising, passing, kalapas. If so, there is no movement. Because those are just kalapas arising somewhere else. Is that clear? So, is there like new kalapas each arising and passing? That's right. Every time it arises, it passes away and a new one arises. And it's super, super fast. It's like a billion times per second. Is it like kind of similar to the concept of like skin cells like dying and reappearing? 
but like faster. Except a billion times faster. Maybe oh. more, more faster. <laughs> So, uh, so when I meditate, should I focus only on like the conceptual one for now? Just the conceptual one for now, please. Oh, but um, for the conceptual one, which like type of like changing should I focus on? Like, should I focus on aging or like, like or? I think the aging else? is the most obvious, so it's a good thing to start with. Oh, uh, what to about basics. like? What about like how like sometimes there's like pain and sometimes they're not not does that count? But that's your perception. The uh, the muscles and the parts of the body they don't feel anything. They don't care. Oh. Uh, what about like how like you die and um and your body decays? Yeah, but that's not happening now. So that's not the, the object of the practice. You consider the fact that now the body is under the this very slow change of aging. Oh, so is the prime object only just aging? No, the prime object is the is the heaviness. Oh. Then is there like a secondary object or is there only yes, one object? Yes, it's like a secondary. If you're bored with hardness, then you can consider change. <laughs> oh, I i don't know why, but I'm still kind of confused on heaviness because you said like how there are like different variations of heaviness for each body part, but you also said how like they're all also like heavy in the same for, way. For muscles. Muscles are heavy the same way. The other body parts, uh, which are the object of intensive practice, which you're not following so far yet, uh, they, uh, of course, weigh different ways. So hair have a different, uh, different proportion of heaviness than muscles or bones. If hair is like light because like it's like you can like fly away with the wind, then why do we still call it heavy? You uh, call it heavy because it's like that there is a temperature. It, like if you said that there is temperature, then you say that it's heavy. It's for the lack of word. Wait, lack of what? Word. I do not have a word that would be equivalent to temperature, but actually, in, uh, actually um, describe heaviness. So when I say heaviness, it doesn't mean that it's heavy. It means that it can be also light. It just shows that there is a measurement of heaviness. Oh, okay. Okay, I think uh, now is the time to finish this class. I also have to go somewhere else. So it was a pleasure to see everybody. May you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you be successful in everything you do. Thank you, Vrindabosa, and everyone for joining the Dhamma Club today. So before we leave, uh, everyone, please unmute your microphone and let's say goodbye to Seattle together. Thank you, Vrindabosa, and goodbye. Thank, Thank you. you. Goodbye, Thank you, Vrindabosa. Goodbye, Vrindabosa.